Hi, it's Terry Denry of the MathWorks. So let's do a test. All right, so that's a DC motor. We just ran a test on it via our Simulink interface. And um, you know, the basic idea is, you know, here's our DC motor. This is an Arduino board right here, okay? And what we've done is uh, we programmed the Arduino board to process a voltage command to actually deliver it uh, to the motor through a pulse width modulation method, right? Now, the other thing that we got going on here is that this motor has a potentiometer, which essentially measures or generates a voltage that then can be converted into a number in degrees that represents the angle of that motor, okay? So, anyways, this is uh, the first video where we really kind of go out and we connect to hardware. And so we're going to show what a good interface Simulink is, or what a good environment it is for doing such things. Uh, we're going to also use that measurement. And so, you know, in our last uh, video, we modeled DC motors. Well, with this measurement we just made, we're going to be able to tune it to be a much more accurate model. And that's kind of how we did it in our robotics example all right and so those dc motors that we've used there are fundamentally formulated based on electronics but then they're tuned for accuracy with with tests that we do in this way all right okay so let's start off by taking a look at our our test setup you know, it's really quite simple you know that we're applying voltages to a to a dc motor we chose this profile we chose it for various reasons but you know, the basic idea is to get that voltage represented by this signal uh, delivered to that motor, right? And then once we get that, then to, to make some measurements, right? And so this block here, we refer to it as the interface. And so voltage in, angle out, right? But this block actually has essentially a hardware component that's taking part in the calculation, right? And, and, and the basic idea, you know, is that that voltage, well, we can't send it 3,000 volts, so we saturate it to begin with, and we're very modest in what we can do, which is 5 volts, plus or minus 5 volts. And then we do something to essentially um, kind of account for the fact that we're going to be working with a variable that can take on values between 0 and 255, right? And that's because it's a 8-bit integer, right, that will be essentially operated on by that Arduino processor connected to the motor. All right, and if we come in here, we'll see that ultimately we get to what we call COM ports, all right? But basically, this is what our USB is plugging into, and when I plug a USB into my laptop and delivers it to the Arduino, you know, this is essentially the route it takes, all right? So this is where things stop in this model, and the real key to this is the programming of the Arduino, all right? And so let's get to the Arduino, okay? And um, you know, what this is making use of is a block set, that's free for download off of our website website called the Simulink Support Package for the Arduino processor. And so you'll see all kinds of stuff that probably makes sense. You know, analog input, analog output, uh, digital input, digital output, pulse width modulation, all that kind of stuff. All right, and so the model that we put together essentially is going to take that number for voltage, which has been converted to something that ranges between 0 and 255. We do a little bit of processing on board. Uh, here's a MATLAB function that does you know, reasonably simple stuff to essentially figure out how to define the forward pulse width modulation and then the backward. All right, And so that basically means it's operating with some H bridges to essentially connect or disconnect to the voltage source. All right, and then that analog input is measured for voltage and ultimately um, some tricks of signal processing are applied and ultimately we do some math to convert it into degrees. Okay, so now I want to just take you through the build process and so I'm going to click on this build button, All right? And so let me view diagnostics as this takes place. But essentially it's code generation, it's generating C code. And this is a very remarkable capability. Okay, it means that you know that you can do stuff on Windows with a tool like MATLAB and Simulink, but it really provides for the portability to deliver what you're doing there to almost any processor, right? And so that that you know is quite powerful. 
right? And, you know, looking at C code may not be the most fun thing in the world. And I'm going to really just show it so that you know that it does exist, all right? And that what we're looking at really does represent what we've put together here. All right. And so anyways, with that code having been built and having re-downloaded it to my processor, why don't we go ahead and you know, run that test one more time? All right. And so I'm going to clear some space. Let's open this up again and let's hit run. All right. And let's open up that scope. All right. And so here's our test again. Okay. All right, so now let's just talk about a few things. Okay, first of all, my, you know, I want to compare this to my Simulink model, right? And my Simulink model starts off at zero, all right? So I got to get that. And, you know, maybe this is proof that this really is a hardware test because certainly something's going on here that I don't understand, all right? And so kind of being familiar with this model, you know, that we did a few things to kind of, um, you know, prepare it properly, all right? And so I want to um, just... Go ahead and click on this. I don't know if you saw that, um, but basically we just ran MATLAB code right here, which took that data, which is automatically put into a logs out data structure and converted it so that we have access to the measurement to the through these two arrays right here. All right, and so I'll just plot it. All right, and so there's our data all cleaned up, starting off at zero. All right. And what's so valuable about that is that this block right here is not just a hardware interface. Uh, it's actually can be quite easily converted into my model. All right. So I go to block choice and choose Simulink model. And you'll recall from video three that we kind of showed a method of solving the differential equations that represent a DC motor as a means of modeling a DC motor. And so that's kind of what we have here. It's a little bit different format. Uh, we integrate that angular velocity one last time to get it to angle, uh, expressed in degrees so that we can compare it uh, with our measurement. Um, you know, and you'll see our electrical calculation taking place right there. All right, so let's hit the run button on this model, all right, and then we'll click this other button, which says plot uh, measurement versus data. All right, and um, you know, clearly our simulation kind of has the appropriate shape but the scaling is off you know considerably all right and so we're going to use our test data now to adjust parameters and see if we can get a better fit you know and the parameters will adjust you know it'll be very physical things you know like inductance resistance in the circuit the uh, shaft inertia maybe the damping constant okay so the tool that we will use to do this with actually let's call it the analysis because it does come from our analysis menu for this model it's called parameter estimation All right, and I'm going to you know, just step by step take you through this because I think this is done quite well all right and so it begins with just introducing the experiment now with regard to what we did here the experiment really is represented by the data that we took which is essentially going to be that angle versus time profile right and so we saw that that's represented by these two arrays right here in our MATLAB workspace so let's go ahead and bring that in right and so I always think this is a little awkward like maybe you know we could do a little bit better in the way we set this up in MATLAB and Simulink but you know really it does the trick it may not be obvious but it really is pretty simple once you do it all right and the the basics of this is the format will be an array structure where the first column will be my time vector and then the second column will be the measurement of the angle corresponding to each of those times. All right, so let's get back to our user interface and we'll just paste that in like that and we'll hit the checkbox All right, and we will add a plot to just make sure that we read it in properly. All right, so sure enough that does look like our data. Now the next thing to do is to select our parameters. All right, and so I'll click on select parameters right here. And I like this quite a bit, all right? So basically my shaft inertia, my torque constant, my inductance, my resistance, drag this down, and my damping coefficient, because they're all defined with MATLAB variables in my Simulink model, are provided to me automatically in a list of things that I could choose. 
Now I'm going to say, well, we should know shaft inertia because we do have a mechanical CAD tool and we can simply get it from that. So I'll leave that unchecked, but let's select the other four. All right, and I'll click on OK. All right, and now, you know, essentially our cost function is being automatically created for us. And all I need to do is set maybe a few reasonable limits on my parameters. Yeah, and the only thing I really know for sure is none of these guys could be negative, so I'll simply put in a lower limit of zero and allow the upper limit to be infinity for each. All right, and let's go ahead and click on OK. Uh, let's add an additional plot. This plot will be um, the parameter trajectories, and let's set up the view so we can see both those things. And let's go ahead and uh, I'm going to do this one last thing. Let's bring the model up there. Let's have the user interface kind of on top of it like that. And uh, let's go ahead and hit the estimate button. All right. And so it creates a dialogue that essentially keeps track of how many times the model is run. And you can see the model is just being run over and over and over again. Right. And essentially, it's looking for what I call the, um, the steepest descent on the cost function surface. Right. And, uh, you know, steepest descent, that's kind of a, a very common term in optimization. And, you know, we use that term because we're applying very classic methods that are contained inside the MATLAB optimization uh, uh, toolbox. Right. Uh, what we're seeing is as these parameters are adjusted, we're getting a very good fit at least for parts of this, um, this uh, simulation between uh, the measurement and, uh, and the simulation data. Okay, so anyways, um, you know, these uh, you know, uh, parameters like torque constant, resistance, inductance, and so forth, you know, those are assigned with MATLAB variables. All right? And so the model basically is going to my MATLAB workspace to, to go get these values. And these values have been updated by our analysis to reflect kind of the performance that we measured in our test. All right? And that we have achieved, you know, better accuracy because of that. All right? And certainly, you know, we're nailing that really big peak right there. Okay? But we're missing very badly, kind of early, right? And I want to address that, right? And the main kind of point is that the problem is with the model, okay? And I want to explain kind of, you know, what's going on with this, you know, and that the test itself was designed with these low-grade ramps at the beginning on voltage that very slowly build up current that very slowly builds up torque, all right? And the goal of this early portion of the test is to identify static friction. All right, and you'll recall our model, you know, there is no static friction coefficient, right? And, you know, the idea, do we move forward or not? Well, I'm going to kind of leave that decision with you, but I will show you the means of moving forward, okay? And the means of moving forward is to actually improve your model for the things that you're going to need it to do. All right, and so I'm going to go to block choice detailed, all right? And the main point here, and you're going to see we're using the tool Simscape to great advantage here, where we're modeling the circuit, we're, we're also modeling the mechanical circuit. And in that mechanical circuit, which case and rod are kind of our key nodes, we're going to impose a static friction block, and that's what this is. All right, and the main thing is that it exposes a static friction coefficient. All right, and so if I, oops, if I load in kind of the results of our data fit for static friction, we'll see that we end up right here. Oops, forgot to hit the run button. And now let's hit that. Okay, and you can, you can see that we can do very well, all right? Again, it's not perfect, all right? And we always like to, you know, bring up that famous quote that all models are wrong, some are useful. So, you know, what constitutes useful? You know, really, you know, you're the one that needs to determine that, you know, and it's the projects and the, the, the products that you're designing and the applications that you're developing for, you know, that those are going to really kind of define the requirements of the development process that you're going to be applying, okay? And hopefully what we showed to you in these last couple of videos is a process that will give you very useful models, okay? And, um, Anyways, so with that, I think, you know, and our application of the robotic arm, I think we do have a useful model. 
right? And so we're going to move forward a little bit more to begin designing controls that will make the system move in a way that we, we need it to move. So thank you for watching the video. Um, if you liked it, please give us a thumbs up. Um, feel free to contact us. We'd love to hear from you. Uh, here's my email address. You can also contact me via LinkedIn, things like that. Um, anyways, thank you. This is Terry. Goodbye.